were. The recently upgraded gym, track fields, and exercise facilities can be used for education, recreation, or personal fitness, contributing to a balanced and healthy university experience. As a more information-based economy, our goal is to help students surpassing future challenges by providing them with holistic education that combines theory and practice. To achieve this, NPTU works with other universities, government agencies, primary and secondary schools, as well as local industries to produce well-rounded graduates who can gain competitive edge in the workforce. Top quality research and teaching, outstanding results, higher education sprout. To promote innovative teaching, establish a flexible academic system, cross-field expertise programs, increase free credits, elective computer programming courses for every student for actively building a future University 4.0 College of Computer Science Development of Artificial Intelligence AI and Virtual Augmented Reality VR AR Technologies Integration of Intelligent Robots and Various Industrial Applications College of Management Focus on wisdom, creativity, innovation, and entrepreneurship to develop Business 4.0 and promote international certification of business management. College of Liberal Arts and Social Science. Develop Ping Dong Studies to provide digital content and software such as visual arts, music, and story scripts required by cultural and creative industries. College of Science. Core foci of College of Science dedicate on applied science in collaborating with renowned international <clears throat> research institutes, promoting science communication, computational thinking, and hand-on science, implementing study abroad program to widen the horizon of students. College of Education. Focus on cultivating teachers, nurturing STEAM education talents, and developing AI artificial intelligence teaching materials. Innovative and international college. Focus on promoting international admissions and implement various cross-disciplines innovation programs. College of Dao Mountain. Improve general education, integrating various social practice plans and courses to assist the sustainable development of regional economy, society, culture, environment, as well as practicing university social responsibility. The Innovation and Incubation Center emphasizes cultural innovation, information technology, business management and marketing, and functional materials. It serves as NPTU's training grounds for young entrepreneurs. Connecting to the world, striving toward globalization. To date, Ping Dong University has signed sister school agreements with over 200 universities and conducts exchange programs with universities in the United States, Japan, and Southeast Asia, etc., thus increasing our presence internationally. To enhance our global standing, we are also working to obtain international accreditation in various fields. In accordance with the government's new southbound policy, Ping Dong University is gathering resources from industry, government, and universities collectively in the Pingdong and Kaohsiung areas to create a platform for exchange and interaction between Southern Taiwan and Southeast Asia. We are also collaborating with Singapore and Malaysia to publish Chinese learning materials for children with the ultimate goal of turning Southern Taiwan into a key hub for Chinese instruction and teaching development. To equip students with foreign language skills and international mobility, NPTU has designed school-wide language courses and activities. Such courses have also helped foster a bilingual and e-learning study environment on campuses, providing ethnic Chinese students from abroad and international students in Taiwan with a chance to learn Chinese while getting to know the local culture. NPTU keeps moving forward. Drawing on its outstanding heritage, 
NPTU continues to produce innovative professionals with a global perspective by bringing together local resources, serving local industries, and collaborating <clears throat> with local businesses. NPTU hopes to benefit not only its students and teachers, but also industry, society, and the nation as a whole. Our aim is to turn Pingdong into an important academic center in southern Taiwan, spearheading social and economic development in the region so as to bring about sustainable and long-lasting prosperity. Okay, um, that's, that's us. So any comments or any questions that you would like to ask? Can you stop that? Yes. Hold okay. On. Uh, I just now I saw someone uh, raise a question of recording the program I, or anything like that. I think uh, we have the recording. Uh, I believe so, Sonia. Are we yes, recording? we do. Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, in the near future, after the program, we will uh, uh, maybe we will have the uh, recorded information uh, available. Uh, uh, in our office and whoever would like to have the copy and we will be able to send one to you. Okay. In only in the case that we have asked and received the authorizations from, from oh, yeah. the certain um, program professors of the professor says no, then we're sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. Anything else that you would like to know more about my university? Any? Don't be shy. Okay. Turn on your camera and ask. Yeah, yes, please. Uh, yes, yeah, Danny, okay. please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I just wondering whether the Pington University has a kind of postdoctoral program. Postdoctoral program? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, uh, the uh, postdoctoral program, basically, uh, based on the professor's research, some of the professor's research might have the postdoc position, but it is not offered by the university, but it is a program that run by the professor's research. Okay, so it may not be so open to everybody because uh, whoever have that kind of opening depending on the research program of the professor. And we don't have that kind of uh, resources to understand what's going on there. We do have a PhD program and master degree program, but we don't offer the postdoctoral po program because the, the so-called postdoctoral program is mostly the research program by the professor. Anything else? Yes, we do. We have another questions relating to um, how about master and PhD program or short course programs <clears throat> in fisheries and agriculture. Okay, uh, National Pindong, you know, <clears throat> National Pindong University is the university uh, uh, made mainly in education and computer science and management, social science and natural science. We are not in the domains of agriculture, so we don't offer any program in agriculture. But I think we do have the PhD program. If stu students are interested in computer science, student, uh, people can apply for the PhD program in the College of Science. In the College of Science, we have the PhD program in Applied Science. So whoever come and apply in the Applied Science, we will be able to relate you to the computer science professor and so that you will be able to ma major in computer science. Okay. Uh, the any, next any other question. that I will be able to add and answer you? 
Yes, one more. Is there any short programs or short course that the participants who are in Taiwan could apply and to join? Okay, uh, the university uh, does provide some kind of short term program, but due to the pandemic, uh, as you know, uh, the Taiwan government has closed its border to most of the international uh, uh, tourists or visitor. So, uh, and during the past two years, we are not open to any kinds of the short term program so far. But I think due to the developing situation here in Taiwan and also in the world, I believe that the universe, uh, the, the government will soon in the future will reopen its border to international visitor. So by then we will be able to adopt the this kind of short term program uh, student or uh, exchange staff from our partner university. Okay, any more questions? Okay, if not, then we will proceed to the next next part. Okay, um, hold on. Oh, sorry, boss. One more question. Um, it's from a professor who who is currently working as the head of the language center at uh, Ratchamongkong University of Technology Lana. Sorry about the last word that I could not pronounce. And he or she is wondering if they could organize a virtual video conference for students from both of the university to exchange language and culture related matters. Sure, uh, I think uh, if you have this sort of uh, ideas of having this kinds of uh, uh, international uh, workshop or seminar for the student. Uh, please get in touch with us, and uh, I think the OIA at MPTU would like to uh, have this kind of workshop with you, for sure, okay? Okay, so um, please write to me or contact me, because I, I can be the contact window for this, okay? All right, so if you have any more questions, you know, from all our dear participants, please leave a message. And at the meanwhile, we will proceed to the next session. Okay, we will have the special seminar by Dr. Arthur. And the topic for the seminar is the influences and changes of higher education under COVID-19 pandemic in Taiwan. Okay, so please, we'll hand over okay, the microphone uh... to you. Okay, uh, thank you all for your participation, as I mentioned earlier. And I think uh, this is a wonderful uh, program that uh, Sonia organized for our uh, either staff or professor from our partner university. And I think uh, we have been work working on this program for a very long time. And I hope the program we prepare for you all will be fruitful and will meet your need in some way. Uh, later, I will try to deliver my speech. Uh, it will be somewhere around two hours or so, two to three hours or so. And I do hope that in the meantime, I need some feedback or some interaction from, from you all because uh, it will be boring if it is only me have uh, been talking and talking uh, for more than two hours. So some of you might feel boring too. So later I will try to give some opportunity to some of the professor or some of the staff because you know better than me about your home country. Even though I have some information from the website, but there are other things that you probably would know much more than me. So I will leave some time for some of the participants to say something about uh, your country or the situation that you face in your country, okay? So the topic that I'm going to talk about is uh, the influences and uh, changes of higher education under COVID-19 in Taiwan. Please allow me to share with you my uh, slide.
Okay. Can you see me now? Yes, Professor. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, let me see what I can do about something. Ah, okay. Hold on. All right. Okay, uh, this is the topic that I would like to share with you. Uh, I believe that uh, many of you are just like me, that we have been suffering the COVID-19 pandemic in the past two years. Uh, maybe I more precisely, uh, we can say two and a half years already from the very beginning of it. So many of the event or many of the activity in higher education or in the primary or secondary education, we all suffer a big impact from the COVID-19. But I think today I will to share with you something that we would experience here in Taiwan and some of the changes that we take under the COVID-19 pandemic, okay? Uh, oop, one second, all right. All right, so uh, first of all, I would like to uh, talk to you about the fundamental things that we talk about, the purpose of higher education. Depending on the definition by uh, ba Barnett uh, in 1992, there are four domains of that uh, in the purpose of higher education. Uh, the, the first one is the production of qualified human resources. And you know that higher education can be considered as a process in which students are the core, uh, are, are counted as products to be absorbed in the market. The, thus, higher education becomes the crucial input to the growth and development uh, of business and industry. And the second part of that is the training for a research career. As some of the participants just asked, that people are trying to do their postgraduate study for a master's degree or for a PhD degree. Basically, in a master and PhD degree is more research oriented. So the higher education is trying to contribute to preparing qualified scientists and researchers, which would help in producing quality research and publication. And the third part is the higher education is a, a matter of extending the chances. Well, uh, later on, I will also talk about this kind of chances because a higher education in a, in a way is seen as an opportunity to participate in the developing uh, development process of an individual through a flexible continuing education mode. And the higher education is usually considered as one that would help the people to, uh, uh, well, uh, I can say is to, to change their life in some way. Because education to me, I always mention that to my students. The education is the most effective way. I won't say the only way, but I will say it is the most effective way for the people to change their life. Maybe I can share that of my personal experience. I used to live in the countryside. Uh, I used to live in the countryside, but through education, now my life has been changed, okay? So the fourth part, building the right kind of teaching and a learning environment. The higher education will bear this kind of uh, 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 character that we are going to have a, a, a teaching and learning environment for our students and in the future probably will be able to influence the secondary education or the primary education. So the institutes of higher education focus on creation and sustenance of the right kinds of teaching and learning environment by improving the quality of teaching and thus enabling students to acquire global competences 
in various fields of study and application to successfully face the challenges in the changing global uh, scenario. Uh, we know that in one of the book that, that the, uh, the author said, the world is flat. So we are now a, a global village or something like that. So that our students, they will have the opportunity, they will have the opportunity to uh, go to different areas in the world and will be able to study under different kinds of environment. And then probably they will be able to uh, learn something and they when they go back to their own country and they will be able to share the information or share what they learn with their uh, native people. So that would in a way to uh, to to help the the people in their home country. So overall, I would say the higher education enable individual to expand their knowledge and skill clearly express their thought through uh, both orally and in writing, grasp abstracts of concepts and theories, and increase their understanding in the world, in their community. And it also has been shown to improve an individual's quality of life and study how that compared to a high school graduate. A college, college graduate have longer life span and better access to health care and better dietary and health uh, practice and greater economic stability and security, more stable employment and greater job uh, satisfaction. All these kind of things, I believe that most of you uh, who participate in this program would have the same kinds of experience, personal experience, and you you will also have this kind of personal understanding in what I just mentioned, because this is the purpose of the higher education. And over here today that we will also try to talk about uh, higher education, in a way we are trying to enable people to be, well, uh, healthy and to be wealthy in some way, but in another way, there are a lot of inequality in higher education. And this is the things that the United Nations is worrying about, okay? And objectives of the higher education. Let's take science, for example, because I'm from the Department of Physics. So in physics or in science, when we talk about the higher education in physics, so we tried, what we are trying to do is to spread the knowledge and to spread the skill based on the forefront science in the subject area of our study. And we also try to train our student, to give our student with the skill to communicate uh, the knowledge at theoretical as well as the applied uh, scientific level so that the student will be able to work in the industry and so on. And we will also like to equip the student with the capability to identify and to formulate and to handle uh, scientifically complicated problem as well as critical evaluation information and to formulate possible solution. And the fourth part that I would say in science, uh, we would like to uh, help the student to have the ability to cooperate and to develop management and professional skill. As you can see here, from these four objectives that we say in science, if anyone in science will be able to have the knowledge, the skill, the capability, and the ability to do all these things, I believe that the student will meet the the, the the purpose of the higher education that we, I just mentioned in the previous slide, and uh, uh, it would be able to help the student to acquire a better life and probably uh, in other way that the student will have 
the ability to access to many other information so that they will become a better uh, a, uh, or a skilled person in the society. But as I just mentioned, the higher education played a crucial role in helping people, but the higher education is crucial role maybe for the economic growth and is widely recognized and in which the people will be able to uh, become better. But the higher education sector is strongly intertwined with some of the public sector through an intensive system of regulation and financial support. And from apart from these many general features, country differed in policy with respect to student section and tuition fee and student support program, and also the public uh, uh, funding of the tech teaching and research. So there are all kinds of uh, a demand in education, in higher ed education, and all of that will cause some sort of trouble. So this is why the United Nations is trying to raise this kind of issue so that in the uh, sustainable development goal, the number four, it has a covenant, okay? It has a covenant and trying to relate the higher education with the sustainable goal. So over here that we will try to see that, let me show you the, uh, uh, well, uh, the, the, the information here is the, the spirits of the covenant underlying the sus uh, sustainable development goal SDGs, which recognize that access to higher education is vital to lifelong learning. And the SDG four include access to higher education in its third target by 2030, ensure equal access for all women and men to affordable and quality technical vocational ter tertiary education, including university. The target emphasized that higher education must be globally accessed to all and of high quality. So over here that you can see that the higher education, the purpose of higher education, of course, is to, to, to help people, but the equality or its accessibility of people to the higher education, actually, it is still very difficult to reach for many people. Okay, it is still very difficult to be met by many people. So I would like to have everybody to bear this in mind. Well, the higher education have a very uh, nice goal and good objective for the for the student and for the people, but how to get there? It is not, it is certainly to me, it is not accessible to all the people. So even though many countries now are trying to improve the opportunity for people to uh, be, uh, to have that opportunity to become a, a, a candidate in the university, but actually it is not as what we think, okay? And lately, of course, everybody knows about the COVID-19 issue. And since 2019, we started to have the COVID-19 and the COVID-19, of course, caused a lot of troubles. And we can see that the COVID-19, I don't know any one of you have ever been in uh, ever being infected by the COVID-19. Personally, I, I have not, uh, in fact, I have not been infected so far, but from the news and from the teaching that we do know that the COVID-19 does have a lot of syn syndrome and uh, uh, high fever, cough and all that, and it is contagious highly contagious at the moment, especially uh, in the Omicron that we are now looking at, the o Omicron is even more contagious than the previous one, okay? So now in the country or everywhere in the world that we are trying to help people to 
stay away from the COVID-19, but um, actually the, the situation is now, uh, I can say getting worse and worse in some area. And even here in Taiwan, when I prepare my, uh, my talk uh, uh, weeks ago, and the, the situation in Taiwan is actually is still quite good. But now the situation suddenly soared in the past few days. Uh, before last week, we had less than, let's say, 50 cases a day. But now, yesterday, if I am correct, uh, yesterday is about 3,900 already. So the government have a, a, a changing policy to the COVID-19 because probably uh, the government is trying to reopen its border again. Uh, so we might lift, we might lift a lot of restriction on the border. So that 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 was the information that I mentioned is that probably in the coming future that the government uh, will reopen its border so that we can have a connection with the world again uh, in the near future. So. Maybe we'll like to see uh, some of the actual things that we are looking at. This is the information I took, let's say, uh, weeks ago uh, when I did the preparation of the talk. And uh, by that time, I have seen that more than, more than 500 million people got infected and deaths, 6 million, all right? And some of the country, they say U.S. has 80, 80 million people, India, 43, and so on. And one of that is, let's see, is, I think it's Korea. Co oh, sorry. I think one of them is Korea, South Korea. South Korea is one in Asia, and it, it took a different approach now. So they lived that's, so they have lifted many restrictions on COVID-19. So the infection cases r rise so fast, okay? So the infection cases rise so fast that that they have, let's say, uh, I think uh, they have cases, let's say, uh, more than 300,000 a day in their country. Okay, maybe at the high peak is about half a million people a day. So that is the reason why you can see South Korea, the cases soared in South Korea and it is now uh, number uh, eight in the world. And so is Vietnam. And because I have a very good friend who is from Vietnam and he mentioned that to me, the, the Ho Chi Minh city used to close the city for about two weeks, but because the consequence of the lockdown is so serious and so terrible. So after two weeks of lockdown, Ho Chi Minh City reopened and then the, con the, the, the government uh, decided to reopen the border. And so the people who from other countries they don't have to do the quarantine anymore. So you can go to Vietnam freely uh, uh, now. So you can see that by reopening the border or by re uh, lifting these kinds of different measures taken under the COVID-19, then you would have more cases, okay? So uh, uh, in the other, uh, uh, from the other side that I will be able to show you with the 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 situation in in Asia. So now number one in Asia is India, second South Korea, and then Turkey, and then Vietnam, and so on. So I think that we will be able to understand that that the pandemic is still very serious here in uh, uh, in in Asia and in the world. So what about here in Taiwan? As I just mentioned that in Taiwan, uh, I would say one week ago, 
we were still very good. Why? Because there are some measures taken in Taiwan that does, that does help the country because we adopt some of the smart technology from the backbone effort to fight the pandemic. Because uh, one of the minister in the COP uh, in our cabinet, uh, he is very good in information technology. So he designed a lot of uh, uh, technical uh, method so that the government will be able to help the people to stay away from the COVID-19 and we will be able to trace people so that we don't get infected. And there are also the epidemiological uh, survey uh, before uh, in the order con control so that whoever come from foreign country will be able to uh, be fully investigated and we will be able to trace them when they enter the country. If they were Im infected, so we will be able to stop the uh, contagion in a way. And then we have the effective monitoring, testing and tracing and investigation mechanism so that almost everybody who is infected will be able to be traced by their mobile phone, by whatever they have with them so that we will be able to trace that. So in the past two years that wherever we go in Taiwan, we have a kinds of uh, action that we do, I will show you later. So that would help, okay? And the triage measure for the mild and severe cases, well, actually some of the people, if they are not so, not in a severe uh, con condition, they will not be sent to the hospital. And for those who are mild, then we have a different treatment for the patient. So that, will also reduce the, conta uh, the contagion of the, uh, uh, of the people uh, in Taiwan, okay? So now uh, let me show you this. Uh, let me show you this. So over here, this is the, the digital technology that really help us is that, uh, Actually, everybody have the, uh, I, I would say that everybody have a smartphone. So then in Taiwan, wherever we go, wherever we go, we use, let me see, why can we have the laser pointer? Excuse me, let me see whether I can see the laser pointer. Hmm, okay, one second. No. Sorry, uh, okay. So in Taiwan, basically that we have the uh, QR code in almost every public location or in every shop. And all the people who go, you must scan the QR code. So that with your mobile phone and you scan the QR code so that the government will be able to trace you wherever you go. Once you are in, in, infected, then the government will have your footprint so that we will be able to make the announcement so that whoever have been to that area will go and do the test and to make sure that uh, whether you are uh, COVID-19 positive or you are COVID-19 negative. So then we can try uh, immediate treatment to the people. So I think with the digital technology that we have here in Taiwan and act, uh, 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 actual application of the technology. So then most of the people can be uh, safe from the COVID-19. So actually this is the part that I believe that we did so well in Taiwan so that the, the situation in Taiwan remained very stable. Uh, for uh, let's say two years until last week. Uh, I think part of the reason for the outbreak from last week is probably due to the uh, hidden cases from abroad. So then 
because we shorten the the duration of quarantine. So probably that might be the cause. But I I uh, that is only my personal guess. However, uh, under the COVID nineteen, the higher education. I can say slightly influenced by the COVID-19. Last year, we had a short period of time that we also have cases more than hundreds. And at that time, we have a lot of measure to help the people in the society and help the people uh, in all levels of school. So. The guideline and measure are announced by the Ministry of Education of Taiwan in the outbreak. So those measure and guideline are actually, to me, I think they are very helpful in a way so that most of the university are safe from the COVID-19 on campus. So no cases, no, I can say no cases on campus. However, one of the major taken by the university is the forbidden, uh, the forbidden of the inbound exchange student and faculty. This is the bad part to me. But well, this is the measure taken by the government. So that in uh, from last year or this year, basically we don't have this kind of short term exchange program to all the student or even to some of the staff. And then the online teaching, uh, online measure is implemented in all levels of university, including uh, National Pingdong University. So with the online uh, uh, teaching taken, I believe that it was only implemented for only about two weeks only. Actually, after that, when the pandemic situation is better, then most of the students, they return to campus uh, after that. And uh, all the universities are active, fully active during the pandemic period. Even now, with the 3,000 cases a day in Taiwan, and I still have to go to work every day. I, I cannot stay at home. <laughs> Sometimes when a student can stay at home for their learning, but we still go to school every day. So it should be something that is very different from other country as far as, as I know. So in National Pingdong University, we still try to maintain the quality teaching and learning. Okay, so we do have a lot of measure that we try to do and we try to prepare the inventory of anti-pandemic material and so on so that hopefully so that hopefully that uh, our uh, our our student our student will be able to have the protection that we provide them okay and we try to stay alert okay we try to stay alert and some of the uh, the technology apply so that can we can have the medical cloud health caring system so that everybody's information will be able to shown in the database. For example, like we, if we take the vaccine and all of the vaccination information will be uh, acquired over the internet. So wherever you go, your health situation can be checked in some way so that we can prevent the infected people to go to the uh, public area so that will cause more contagion. So all of these are taken in the university to assure their quality teaching and learning. The result of that is the current pandemic situation in Taiwan as when I uh, start to prepare my uh, lecture. Uh, now we rank 159 in the world with less than 40,000 cases. But now I believe now the cases is now more than 50,000 now. And uh, all levels of school are currently active with less than 1% uh, 
closed, okay? Uh, including university, including uh, secondary school, including the elementary school. So less than 1% closed. So all daily activity are nearly as normal as before. So I can say that I'm proud of the situation that we have here in Taiwan and the pandemic uh, does affect the country, but not in a very serious situation. So I think this is the first part that I would like to share with you, the effects of the uh, pandemic uh, in Taiwan. So probably uh, I would like to have a five minutes break. Uh, later, I will start to talk about the higher education uh, in Asia and in your country and also in Taiwan. So uh, we will have a five minutes break and uh, I do hope that we when we come back, I will start to ask some questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll I, I will get back to you later. Hello. Hi, good morning, sir. Okay, good morning. Uh, before I continue, uh, may I ask all of you to show yourself so that I will be able to see you? You know, let, uh, as I just mentioned, uh, the online teaching and learning uh, have been implemented in Taiwan for a short period of time. And later on, all the university and all the school, uh, they asked the student to return to campus. And um, I believe that many of the professor might have the same feeling like I have, because we feel that the online teaching does 
has its bad side. Okay, does have its bad side because, as we can see, that many of the people may not be able to show themselves、uh, before the camera. Part of that is because that somebody may not have a, a, a good internet connection. And may not have the、uh, accessibility of the camera because some of the students say, "Well, I'm sorry, professor, that I I don't have a camera and so on." So actually, that it caused some sort of trouble there. So, but I think similarly, like what we are doing now today is when I try to give my lecture to you and. Uh, people are missing from the camera. Of course,、uh, the more people we have, the more internet situation might be worse. But I believe that the internet connection uh, 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 at MPTU is perfectly good. But now,、uh, just now, I mentioned something about the situation in Taiwan.、Uh, can anybody from the five different countries? Will be able to share some of the information of the pandemic in your country. Somebody. Well, let's take、uh, the representative from, let's say, from Thailand or from Vietnam, from Philippines, or from Indonesia. Anybody can share something about your country information. Raise your hand and share something of your country. Current situation. Okay, please. Uh, uh, who is、uh, Aprila? Aprila? Yeah, yes.、Uh, good morning, Professor.、Uh, I'm sorry, I cannot turn on my camera due to my Wi-Fi is not very good. It will、okay. leave my computer. But、um, actually, I'm、uh, in Taiwan. I'm currently in Taiwan because I have my PhD program here. But、uh, I, I, my, you can call me Mita. It will be easier. And then I came from Indonesia, and the current status of Indonesia is right now is、uh, maybe more <laughs> likely. Everyone tried to ignore that there, there is a COVID nineteen because、mm -hmm. um, we have like religion, religion even. Uh, this month, especially, is Ramadan, and also the next month, the next month, early of the May, is、uh, Eid Eid Al Fitri, which is like a, a celebration、uh, in,、uh -huh. in Indonesia, and everyone more likely、uh, focus on that celebration instead of keeping their their safety, because even the government say that they have to. Uh, do the health protocol and such. They just ignore it. They just want to go <laughs> to their home,、uh, home city, and and together with their family, and that's all. And also, there are so many other issues that they keep、uh, more important than the pandemic itself. Because maybe people are, like、uh, exhausted from the pandemic. Uh, and like feels like it's already two years.、Uh, the pandemic's already gone, or something like that. So they ignore、mm -hmm. it so much. But actually, the case is still more a、uh, more a、uh, mm -hmm. higher than in Taiwan. Of course,、uh, I feel <laughs> like I can put Taiwan in in a safe manner, but not in Indonesia.、Uh, that's that's all I can share. Thank you for、okay. the opportunity, Professor. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And how about Gusti? Gusti? Yeah. Hello, so everyone. Right. Yes.、Um, uh, hello.、Please. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. Please.、Uh, yeah. Okay. Is my voice clear enough? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, I'm living. Hello, everyone. I'm from Muhammadiyah University of Surabaya. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, Surabaya is the second biggest city in. Indonesia.、Uh, we are、uh -huh. in East Java.、Uh, uh -huh. It's metropolitan city, I think. And maybe I would like to share my my perspective of the COVID itself from my own city. 
uh -huh. yeah it's, it's quite different like what bu bumita said about the the COVID, the COVID uh, case in my in my city and for your information actually i me myself i experienced COVID. so i got uh the i got COVID even two times i got omicron myself Ooh. last time yeah Ooh. so last year i got it COVID like the previous delta uh, i mean not the delta one the previous one and mm -hmm. i see it for COVID for two weeks and then the it's just last two months i got omicron but uh, in my perspective, uh, Omicron uh, that we have nowadays is not that uh, serious. It's not that serious, yeah. Probably if mm -hmm. Bumita said the perspective of uh, religion that people are ignoring it, it's not uh, <clears throat> okay. It's not completely 100 percent that mm -hmm. case is happen in my area because okay. nowadays uh, our government we have policy that. Uh, we can go uh, for commuting from different cities uh, with mm -hmm. a certain condition mm -hmm. that we got uh, three times vaccine. So we have two times vaccine and most of us are vaccinated already. Mm -hmm. And we have the obligation to get the third booster. We call it the third okay. booster vaccine. And then we can travel after the third booster so there is okay. no more uh there is no more policy of having pcr as strict as before so we can mm -hmm. travel everywhere as long as we have got uh three times vaccine that's the policy okay. and okay yeah in maybe i would like to share a little bit about the education related to your uh, presentation just now professor and mm -hmm. in in especially in my a region it's a big city so most mm -hmm. of the schools nowadays are uh, going back Open. offline yes yeah, going back mm -hmm. offline but previously we have it uh, not instantly everyone goes online so uh, there is like a shift for students because we have limited facilities that uh, we provide uh, the, the class Actually, commonly we have 40 students, 30 to 40 mm -hmm. students in schools, yeah, in schools. And but now since COVID, so uh, the students are going to school in shift, uh, split into 20 students maximum. So they mm -hmm. have a rotation that, uh, for example, a class is coming today and the next day is different classes. So there will be no more, uh, not too much crowd in a school. Okay. Yeah. But Thank you. That's the perspective. And for okay. uh, higher education degree in my university, we are not yet offline. We're still having online for this whole two years. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. So we okay. haven't started any offline. That's okay. Thank funky. you. Yeah. That's yeah. Funky. Thank you. I would like to invite uh, Tanita to say something about the situation in your country. Yes, good morning, professors and everyone. I'm Tanita from Thailand and I'm living in Bangkok, my university in uh -huh. Bangkok. So I would like to share in my area now today in, in Bangkok, we, I think many university, we reopen and allow students to, to, to get back into their classroom. But, but it depends on each now, now today, many university they has announced has now means that they allow students to get back into their class. But even though it's depend on lecturer, the owner of of class, they they will make decision themselves. Maybe they may ask you may may give a survey to student about 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 that decision to make decision together they want to join online class or they want to join on-site class, it depends now today. Okay. But okay. Mo mostly, mostly all presidents, they said that they try to encourage everyone, every lecturer that uh, it should be, if the, your class, you have more than 50% in practice, supporting that in medicine faculty, 
they will encourage every lecturer to 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 make that class their on-site class. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And how about Unari? Yes, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Professor. And also good morning, Ajahn Tanida. So I'm also from Thailand. And uh, but in a different part of Thailand. So Tanida is in Bangkok, but I'm in Pisanulok, Thailand, in the lower northern part, like between Bangkok and Chiang Mai. So mm -hmm. um, my university is a bit small. So the number of students in each class is quite small also. So mm -hmm. um, in the past, like last semester, now we are during the summer break. So last semester, um, whether the teacher would like to organize the class online or on site depended on the number of the, the students in your class. For example, let's say I have like 10 students in my class. So um, after I had a survey with the student, like where have you been? Where were you in the past few months before the semester mm -hmm. started? So if um, I was so quite certain that the student were not at risk of getting the COVID-19, so I could organize the class on site. But if the students are more like 50 students or 30 to 50 students, the class would be online. So to protect both the teacher and the students at the same time. And let's see after the summer break what will happen in june so we have it to um keep track with the announcement from the government and also the protocol of the province as well um and we hope that we we, we can organize the on-site class in the next semester all right okay yeah, thank you. Thank you. I think uh, due to the time limitation, I will stop here. And uh, uh, well, I would like to say, uh, Goshi, uh, I should say lucky you, huh? You recover from the two COVID uh, 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 situation. And I think that it's lucky. Uh, it's good news. Uh, but I think uh, nowadays, as far as I know, the Omicron, actually, this most of the syndrome are quite mild in some way it's probably more or less like a flu because uh my daughter is now studying in the u.s and uh, uh almost all of her friends got infected and uh most of the people they stayed at home for two three day or four five day and then they went back to school so in the U.S. university, basically most of the university are open and actually nobody wear the mask uh, because uh, my daughter showed me the football game they have on campus and the football stadium they have, they, that can accommodate 100,000 people and almost 90% of them wear no mask. So you can know the situation over there in the US, they are quite open at the moment. But I think we are still a little bit conservative in some way uh, because we have to worry about the capability of the hospital, whether we will be able to accommodate so many patients or not. So, well, uh, I do hope that the situation will get better in the coming future. Now I uh, I would like to share with you. Oops, okay, sorry. That I would like to share with you some of the information in higher education in Asia. I will start to talk about the situation here in Taiwan and the situation uh, in your country. Maybe somebody would like to share with uh, with us uh, some of the information that you have. Okay. All right, now the first one I would like to share with you. Here is a graph that we I would like to show you the trend of change of the in education in Taiwan. Uh, Sonia, uh, can they see my uh, Sonia? Can they see my slide? Can 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 you see my slide? No, not yet. Uh, not Sonia. Yet. Uh, no, they cannot see your slide. Hold on. Uh, can you pin it? Uh, yes, 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 yes. I'll pin you. Can you pin it? Yes. Yes. Pin the slide, please. 
Uh, Can you see the slide? Hold on, hold on. <clears throat> oh, you want me to try that again? Uh, yes, please try try again. Okay. I pinned All you. Right. You need to share. Okay, let me try to do that again. Please. Oop. One second. Okay. I'd apologize for that. Because lucky me, I am working from home, so <laughs> all right. Okay. Oh yep, so your slide. Can you see it now? Yes. All right. Okay. Yep, your slide look good. All right. Okay. Now I think over here I would like to share with you the the, the change in the higher education in Taiwan. Uh, actually, during the past uh, few decades, there's a tremendous change in Taiwan uh, in terms of the higher ed education. In the very beginning, we have a few university, and then we have some liberal colleges. And most of the uh, higher education, we can say, is the colleges, uh, five years college or two years college or three years college. But through the time, there are several educational reforms. So now we have so many university, the comprehensive university and technical uh, university in Taiwan. OK. OK, we have many like. Uh, a technical university and comprehensive university, and still some technical colleges, but mostly uh, we have the uh, university levels of education in what we understand as the tertiary education. However, that lately, uh, I don't know whether you understand the sub replacement fertility issue. Do you understand that? Sub okay, if you don't understand that uh, terminology, then I can use a simple word to say is the low birth rate. The low birth rate in Taiwan. I believe this kind of low birth rate is happening in almost every Asian country. Later on, I will probably be able to show you the trend of all the countries uh, in our uh, partner university. So then you will be able to see that the higher education, we we did have the high expanding period, but as we expand to certain level, now the Taiwan higher education is now facing a serious problem because of the low birth rate. So in the coming future, actually the student, the source of the student is actually reducing very much. Okay, let me give you one figure that you will be able to understand is that when I was born, that was a long time ago. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Uh, it's about 60 years ago. Okay, when I was born, at that time we have about 400,000 newborn baby a year, but now only less than 180,000 a year. So you can see the decrease in the newborn baby. And when you see the decrease in the newborn baby and you will be able to understand, now we have a big capacity of university but we don't have that many students. So this is the problem. 
Okay, so this is the problem that we are facing now in Taiwan is that uh, the low sub replacement fertility of the nation, the higher education institute in Taiwan are now facing the decrease of enrollment. Uh, and that will be a crisis management of the university. Okay, so this is the situation that you can see. And we are now discussing about how we can help those university with low enrollment to either to shut down the university or to, to transfer their student to somewhere else. And I think these are the issues that have been discussed every day in Taiwan in the higher education uh, uh, circle. Now, let us go to Thailand. Okay, here is the situation that I understand about Thailand. I have been to Thailand for, let's say, 10 times. Okay, and I believe that the major issue faced in the Thailand higher education is very similar to Taiwan because uh, I believe that last time I went to uh, Ching Lai Ratapa University in Ching Lai and I heard that they are, they are now experiencing a decrease of about 10% of students. Okay, 10% decrease of students in the past few years. So uh, I don't know whether that is the situation in your university or not. But look over here that if we look at the uh, if we look at the 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 seats of the learning, we do understand that Thailand also has a big numbers of uh, university uh, somewhere around 300 something and uh, the uh, population growth rate in Thailand is declining. You can see it's from the 70 is 3% growth. Now, the population growth rate is only 0.25 in Thailand. Let me tell you the figure in Taiwan. The figure in Taiwan is 0.19. Thailand, 0.25. So I believe that this is the situation that we are facing in Thailand and also in Taiwan. And this is Vietnam. To me, I think Vietnam is one of the most promising country in, in Asia because of its high population and growth rates uh, uh, compared to others, okay? Over here, I've shown you that Taiwan is 0 0.18, Thailand 0 0.25, okay? Let me see, okay. Uh, Thailand, Thailand is uh, 0.25, Indonesia is good, 1.07 so far, and Vietnam, 0.9. But over here, that you can look at this and you will be able to understand. Look at the train. Look at the train in all countries, in all these few countries. Even though Indonesia is still 1.07, Vietnam 0.9, but look at the train. They decrease, let's say, most of the country decrease some let's say, uh, let's take Vietnam as one example, it decreased by 75%. Maybe for Taiwan, we decreased by 90%. Okay, we decreased by 90%. But Vietnam, let's say 70% or so. So you can see that this kind of decrease in the population is one of the major issues that all the countries have to face in the future. Because because of the high population in the past, let's say uh, 20 or 30 years ago. So there is the expansion in the higher education. But later on, when this kind of decrease in population occur, then 
the already existed university may not have so many student resources to enroll in the university. And then the higher education will start to have a lot of impact in different ways. So this is the situation that we can see in Vietnam. In Malaysia is the same, okay? Malaysia is the same. Uh, Malaysia, uh, as I have shown you here, that uh, Malaysia have uh, the public higher education, only 20, okay? And then most of them are private higher education institute. And I think we have a total number of more than nearly 500 over here. And the population in Malaysia is still rising, but the birth rate or the uh, population growth rate is still also declining. So it is, it, is, it is something that is serious in Malaysia as well. Later, I would like to uh, ask you to share with me the current situation in your country. Here in Philippines, it's the same. So I have uh, the Philippines is 1.3, Vietnam 0.9, Thailand, let's say, uh, as I mentioned, is like a 0.2 something. And here is 0.3. So the higher education in uh, in Philippines, uh, from the information I have, the, the state university, the percentage is, is still low. The private is high, uh, pretty much like uh, Malaysia. But I don't know about the enrollment of the, because the information I have, I could not see the number that you have. So can I have the, can I have the uh, uh, right to ask uh, our participant, would you be able to share with me some of the situation in your country? Anybody would like to say, share something, uh, let's say uh, uh, in Philippines, in Thailand, or in Malaysia or in Indonesia, would you like to share with us any problem happening in your, in your university? Maybe some of the professor might have the resources, maybe not the staff. Or the staff is in the Office of Academic Affairs. They might be able to know more about that. But I would like to see something that is more uh, comprehensive about the university. Anybody can share with us? Uh, let's see. Uh, we have the uh, associate professor of Dr. Plot. Would you, would you like to share something? I'm sorry, I couldn't see your full name. Okay, uh, Napadon. Napadon, yeah. uh, would you please? Yes, please. John, okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, uh, I, I would like to say uh, to share with you about about the the higher education situation in Thailand, uh, in 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 two perspective. The first one is about the pandemic effect to the higher education, and the second one is about the the uh, low birth rate. Uh, for for the low birth rate, I think I experienced the this for many years ago in 2006 uh, visit japan and and uh they become a, a elderly society on that time already and effect to many university on that time and during i'm study in taiwan uh mm -hmm. also uh i heard that on that time in 2009 uh, a lot of unity in Taiwan effect from the low birth rate. And when I back to, to Thailand in 2004, 2014, right? Uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the workplace that I, I work on that time have a student around uh, 20, 22 or 23,000. But nowadays mm -hmm. in, in uh, MUTL, in Russia Mangala University of Technology, Lana, uh, have a student around one, uh, no, 15, 16,000 for nowadays. 
you you can see the 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 percentage of of the decrease uh, decrease a bit uh, mm -hmm. worry about about this however uh, higher education try to figure out this problem uh, a bit uh, late I, I should I should say because uh, it's hard to to plan ahead of this uh, because mm -hmm. we changed the structure of the ministry uh, past two or three years ago uh, because uh, before uh, this uh, we we are in the ministry of education but now we separate to the new ministry and they allocate the the budget or, or the funding <clears throat> quite uh, new for for the university to practicing uh, about this budget by the way uh, we try to looking for uh, the the input of the university in the other perspective for example like a try to make it like a lifelong learning or for like mm -hmm. a work mm -hmm. to skill upskill we try to do that but uh let's say in thailand some of professor or some of, le of lecturer is quite different from taiwan professor that we don't have the experience to work with business to work with the industry this is a problem that we're facing okay uh okay. and i i would like to say that due to the pandemic uh, situation in in the world effect to the student who want to continue higher education because the because many reasons for example like uh, economics or like uh, they bore to study online <laughs> they have the experience in high, uh, high school for two years and why they have to go to uh, university and study online again uh, without practicing or with, without uh, socialize with their friends or something like that yes uh, okay I, I, I okay yeah I thank you this. Yeah. okay thank you anyone else would like to share anyone else would like to share okay uh let's see uh dunning dunning yeah dunning, thank please. you yes it's me thank you yeah um in my i'm from indonesia actually uh, specifically in jombang a little city in eastern part of indonesia um actually indonesia also uh, we also experience the same uh, the similar condition yeah so the number of the students most of in most of universities in indonesia are decreasing mm -hmm. yeah uh, because of maybe one of the causes because of the decreasing of the popul the population in our country however in this um, nowadays situation the covid-19 <clears throat> pandemic also affecting significantly on the decreasing of the number of the students right so uh, most of the students nowadays are focusing to get a job instead of to go to school to continue their study because most of um, most of families most of uh, people in Indonesia um, have a problem in their economic condition that's why they decide to go okay. to work instead of uh, going to school yeah. or continue their study. Yeah, because they need to make money uh, yes. to yeah for their life or they for um, focusing on their daily life. So uh, maybe they are not thinking about having what is it? Find some money, getting uh, some money for education. Yeah, so their focus now is only in their economic condition because okay. of the COVID-19. Okay. And I believe that most of the countries also face the similar situation nowadays. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. 
Okay. Uh, so over here, I show something about Indonesia. I I was surprised by the numbers of uh, higher education institute in in Indonesia because uh, from the information I have that they have so many university and polytech and so on. So, uh, but I I I I. I do understand that Indonesia has more than 230 million people, but the number is still uh, is quite high to me. But over here, I think overall that when we look at that, we will be able to see that, that for example, I also would like to share with you the information about China. So you can see the education expansion in China the numbers of students increase so much. And you can see now each year they have graduated from the university. They have 7 million students graduate from the university. And think about the job opportunity for the student. It is unlikely that China have so many job opportunity for this 7 million university graduate. To me, I, I don't think that they have. But even though we know that uh, China used to be the world factory and so on, but 7 million students is still a big number. But nowadays, we can also see China is facing a lot of different kind of problem uh, from the conflict between U.S. and China and other kinds of area, and also the very low sub-replacement fertility. That is also a big problem in China because in China they used to have the one-child policy, and that caused a big trouble now. So uh, maybe every country have their own problem, but I believe that the low sub-replacement fertility is the major issue on all the university. And of course, on top of that, <clears throat> on top of that, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic also caused even more problem to the higher education. Because that we can see that in, uh, in the 20th century, most of the major technology are in the West, but now the, uh, but now the uh, uh, globalization subject has moved the West, moved from the, the, the technology now moved from the West to the East, along with many uh, manufacturing industry. Like, uh, like I said that in China, uh, quite, a, quite a lot of the manufacturing moved from, uh, from Europe, from uh, USA, and from Japan to China. So there is a shift in this. And also, secondly, the closure of all levels of education due to the pandemic in many countries caused the students' learning from stopping from school. So most of the students, they cannot go to school. So then, the distant learning become the new norm of education to many of the students. But this kind of major and quick transfer from the on-site to distant learning, I believe it helped in some way better than nothing. But the quality is a, is a major issue. And just now one of the professor mentioned about the recession in economics, because there's a huge change in the world economics and also the social and interperson interaction. The, the major one in economics caused the problem so that many of the students may not be able to afford their tuition anymore. The parent may not be able to support the kid. So the enrollment will also be affected in some way. And because some of the country, they are heavily relying on tourism, okay? They are heavily relying on tourism. As far as I know that, uh, let's say uh, 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 Spain is the second largest country in the world. They have more tourists visit their country, but because of the pandemic, 
not so many people visit Spain anymore. And I believe the same thing might happen to Thailand, to Indonesia. Let's say in Thailand that the famous destination, the Phuket Island, the uh, uh, Kong, Kong Samui, or let's say uh, in Indonesia, the Phuket, uh, the, uh, the Bali and so on, and all kinds of the tourist destination. There's no international tourist. There is no domestic traveler. So these kinds of uh, business opportunity have been killed and causing problem with the family income. And that increased the social problem, okay? And then, as I said, the uh, online learning depend heavily on the internet. However, the internet uh, penetration depend heavily on the geographical situation because not every place have a good access to the internet. So that caused other problems too. So now here, the overall influences on higher education, to my point, it affects in the four area, the mobility of student, the internationalization, the quality assurance, and the final one is the inequality. All right, the inequality. The mobility of the student, I think it is quite obvious in some way because of the pandemic, the closure of the border, so that the student may not be able to do the international traveling. So then the mobility has greatly decreased in some way. The internationalization, of course, we understand internationalization, uh, is associated with the uh, uh, exchange program, the research program, and so on. And all of those things, the research and teaching and learning, they are stopped in some way. As we are sitting here uh, from your home or from your office, that we have this online meeting. It used to be something that we can see each other face to face, but now we can only sit at home and facing this kinds of uh, 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 online uh, seminar or workshop. So that is a big change too. And the quality assurance, as I said, that the internet accessibility is different from place to place. And that will be a big problem. I visited the uh, the northern part of Thailand. Uh, when I went to the northern part of Thailand, actually, is a very remote area uh, uh, in Chiang Rai, a province in the mountain area. I went there, and I have seen that quite a lot of this family they live in the mountain area, and I worry about the accessibility of their internet. Uh, to the school, and if the family have two students, uh, two kids, three kids, how can the family support the kid with the uh, the uh, mobile device so that the st the student will be have accessibility to the to their classes? So that is also a big problem to the quality assurance, and that raises another issue in the inequality because the inequality problem is serious because of the pandemic. Because I can say that those family with high income may, even though there is a recession in economics, but to them, the reduction in income will not heavily affect their uh, uh, family living standard they, that won't, but for the, the people with lower income, a small change in the income will have a big problem. And the inequality problem may not only happening in Asia only. As far as I can see that in some of the, uh, in the US, let's say US, there is a big difference from the geographical issue. We, I will talk about that later, 
then let us come to show I will show you some of the information that we have is the mobility of the student and mobility of the inbound student in Taiwan. Now the uh, the Ministry of Education agree to open border to the degree seeking student, but the exchange student, the intern student, no, we close the border. We close the border to the exchange student and the uh, uh, intern student. So in the past two years, basically, I can say is that we have no any uh, exchange student from abroad. We don't have any intern student from abroad. We only have degree seeking student. Okay, we have only degree seeking student uh, to 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 our uh, country. And also that change in some way, the mobility of the outbound student in Taiwan, actually the degree seeking student dropped by 50%. Over here, I have shown some of the uh, information here. The previous year in 2019, we still have uh, outbound student about 41,000 uh, student, but in 20, we have only 19,000. In the years 21, we have 21,000. So more or less, the decrease is by, let's say, 50%. And the exchange student from the case uh, at MPTU, it decreased by 60%. And the educational intern student, uh, we supposed to uh, send our student abroad for their intern, is also decreased by uh, diminished by fifty percent. As in my MOE project, uh, I'm working with the MOE with some project, and the number decreased as well by fifty percent. Then, as I mentioned the research, the teaching, and the learning. These are the three main uh, core function of the university. And the university will try to provide opportunity for the professor or for the student to go abroad for their on-site uh, research. But because of the pandemic, all of these kinds of projects uh, well, I can say either being postponed or either been terminated and uh, the the collaboration between the partner university is, n is now almost impossible in some way. Uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Sui Tree, uh, can you turn your a microphone up, please. Uh, tree. can you turn it off, please? All right. Uh, and then uh, the the knowledge in teaching basically is through uh, the uh, exchange of the international scholar, and but because of that no traveling uh, from abroad. So some of the spreading of the teaching uh, uh, knowledge and so on uh, cannot be done. And the learning, most of the students, I can say, my students prefer the on-site study abroad. In the past few years, I have the experience of taking my student to our partner university for a short-term uh, uh, ex exchange. But however, because of the pandemic, it is not possible anymore. And many of the students uh, dream to have this sort of experience to be the exchange to, uh, exchange opportunity to partner university. And uh, luckily, I think lately, because of the reopening of the border in many other uh, country. So now some students are able to go to our partner university uh, in a way. For example, now I have four students. Three are now visiting uh, Czech Republic and one is visiting uh, Italy, okay? So I think this semester, this semester three in Czech, 
Republic and one in Italy. So I think that this is a good sign and that uh, some of the reopening border will help the student to continue their dream of doing this kind of on-site study as an exchange student. All right, and uh, <clears throat> a quality assurance. Uh, basically, it has different sort of uh, requirement, but uh, uh, I won't go into the detail, I think, because of the time issue. I don't have that much time. So uh, the quality assurance, of course, is one thing that is important in the uh, university education, because we need to make sure that the transfer or the spreading of knowledge to the student is effective while they are studying in, in the university. They, the, the spreading of knowledge and the transfer of knowledge is good. But because of the pandemic, everything switched to a online teaching in, in some area. Uh, I think just now uh, we heard from uh, our, uh, a participant from Indonesia or from Thailand that we can see that there is a long period of time most of the students stayed at home for their education only through the online teaching. But my personal experience with the online uh, teaching and learning, actually I can say uh, the outcome is not so satisfactory in some way. So uh, I, I believe that many of the professor will agree with me because uh, students always have a, a lot of excuses that they will not be able to be in class or they will not be able to turn in their homework. They will not be able to uh, uh, show up in their exam and all kinds of excuses. But these also creating problem in while we are talking about quality assurance in higher education, these will be something that is pretty bad because the measuring and monitoring system that we are trying to do uh, related to the strategic uh, management and the process that we are working on it. But now because of the online teaching, many of the situation may not be able to be considered in some way. So, and the inequality in higher education, basically what I understand is that gender is an issue. Oh, I, I don't know about uh, 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 the current situation in our partner university, but the gender is actually a major issue as mentioned in the SDG S4. They emphasize on the women's uh, participation in the higher education. In, uh, of, of course, this kind of situation is getting better and better. But according to the information I saw in the United Nations about the pandemic, it is giving uh, uh, the figure that due to the pandemic, more than 47 million, more than 47 million of the women will not be able to have the opportunity to go to university, to go to the higher education. And also, 29% of the women will have to share more loading in the family, 29%, okay? And I think is one in two of the, uh, 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 I think it's one in two of the, the lady uh, have particular uh, difficulty in their higher education. So, the pandemic does creating much more, especially in some of the area or some of the country, they have the gender preference. So these will be some kind of problem that we will see. And the finance is also the inequality that I just mentioned. The parental education background, income and social status, and all of that will be something that is serious. In one of the French research that I have seen, 
okay, in one of the French research that I have seen over here, I show in the bottom of finance. It shows the income situation in France, and that is very similar to the situation in the U.S. Okay, that is very similar to the situation in the U.S. It says that 30, uh, if the parents are in the lower half, or let's say in the bottom of the income distribution, only 35% of the individual may have the access to higher education. But those in the top, there are 90% of the individual will be able to go to higher education, go to the university. So I believe that the, the finance situation is, is a big difference in inequality in higher education, especially under the effect of COVID-19. Let's say, let me put it that way, give you some figure instead. Let's say if a family, let's say, uh, the, the 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 household income, let's say ten thousand U.S. dollar a month, and compared to those who with one thousand U.S. dollar income a month, when there is the huge impact in the financial situation, the ten thousand drop by twenty percent, by thirty percent. They still have seven thousand, but let's say. The family with 1,000, even though they have an impact of 10% only, then the family situation is much more affected by this kind of recession. So actually, th this would generate much, much more inequality in the higher education. And the geography is also one problem. Uh, I, I would like to give you uh, one of my personal experience is that when I was a juvenile, Okay, when I was a juvenile, when I was little, when I went to high school, because I live in the countryside, in the suburban area, in the southern part of Taiwan, and it usually take me one and a half hour to go to school in the morning, and then one and a half hours to go home by taking the bus. But how about for those who are in the city? It's easy. They they can either take the uh, bicycle or take the bus. Uh, uh, so it won't take them too much time to go to school. But for me, who live in the countryside in the suburban area, it take me one and a half hours. And I have to wake up at five or so and try to be there by 7.30. So it was terrible. But I think, uh, luckily, uh, I went through that, and uh, at the moment, I see something that is nice. But I think that during the pandemic period, all the barrier that we are going to see would be even bigger for the people, okay? Even bigger for the people. And uh, so uh, that would be something that is quite serious in a way. Now. Let me get to the commercial time that I would like to say that is that, okay, the MPTU, actually we are working hard to eliminate this kind of financial barrier to the student. So we offer scholarship to the international student. All the, I can say as the deans of the Office of International Affairs, I can say that all the international students who apply to National Pingdong University, we offer them with scholarship, okay? In a way, I can say that they can study for their master degree for free in terms of their tuition. All the students, okay? All the students who come to National Pingdong University, we can try to offer them with scholarship so they study for free. As far as I know, in Thailand, to study for the master degree in the public school, it will probably take you about one hundred thousand baht a year. Is that is that is the number correct, uh, Professor Napadon? 
is the number correct? About 100,000 baht. Uh, it depends on the university. Uh, okay. some, some, some university is more expensive than that. Uh, well, I said that uh, the pu public school, as far as I know, every year is about 100,000 baht. And then if you study for the master degree for two years, that's 200,000 baht. But if you come to National Pingdong University, basically you don't have to pay for the tuition. We offer scholarship for the student. So uh, actually you will be able to study here for free. Uh, so that is the reason I said that my university is trying to eliminate this kind of financial barrier. Of course, the student, uh, have to uh, pay for their own living expense here. But I think the living expense is not that much difference compared to Thailand, okay? So, but I think uh, we are trying hard to do that. So, oh, any one of you or your student are interested in coming to National Pingdong University for their postgraduate study, okay? Please get in touch with Sonia. And I believe that Sonia will be able to author the information to you so that you uh, will be able to help your student to have the opportunity to study uh, at National Pingdong University. And we, we promise that we will take good care of your student in, uh, uh, beside uh, uh, providing them with scholarship. We have a lot of uh, uh, measure that we we do to help our international student. Okay, so I uh, I think it. What what time is it? Okay, now uh, I would like to stop here for another five minutes, and then I will continue uh, to the next section of issue that I would like to share with you. Okay, we'll stay here for uh, let's say five minutes. Okay, it's now eleven seven. So probably we'll uh, stop here for another five minutes and then we'll come back later. Okay, thank you for your attention.
Hello, all. Uh, are we ready to come back? Sure, Professor. Yeah, okay. Uh, I hope it is not too boring to you. Uh, all right. Uh, now uh, I would like to share with some, share with you some of the things that uh, I think is important uh, uh, because uh, you know, like uh, there are a lot of uh, possible difficulty that we are going to face in the future. You know, because uh, due to uh, some of the uh, closure or recession in e economic and so on, and we can see that there are a lot of. Uh, problem in the internationalization. Uh, the, the, the continuation of the pandemic, I think it is still taking place. Even though some of the uh, country, they reopen their border, but the situation is still quite serious. I hope, I do hope that according to some of the medical doctor that I know, they mentioned that, <clears throat> they mentioned that the, uh, that the the pandemic situation will change in a way that the virus will change themselves so that the uh, syndrome will not be that serious so that people will get used to them so that in the future the the people will choose to coexist with the virus so this is the the theory that i heard from some of the medical doctor it won't be that serious if it is so serious, we will try to kill the virus. But if the situation is not so serious, then uh, the the we the people will try to uh, uh, coexist with the virus. So this is the understanding that I have from uh, one of the medical doctor that I know. And even though with the reopening of the border, some of the price due to certain situation the high rise, the overcharge price in many situations. Uh, for, for one of the situations I know is for my daughter. When she tried to book the flight to US last year, one way ticket, I think it's about some 40,000 NT is about uh, 45,000 bar, or maybe I don't know that in, uh, in, uh, Vietnamese money, but in Malaysian, Malaysian is probably one tenth, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 4,000, but you know, the number is still huge in a way in the past, probably to the U S it is only like, let's say, uh, one way is let's say a, a wrong trip is like. 30,000 NT, but now one way is 40,000. And probably you won't be able to get the price. Uh, most of the, the, that is the cheapest price that you can get. And something more than 60,000 is easy in some of the airlines. So, so that will be the problem uh, for the future uh, international internationalization of that. And uh, online education, is something probably that we are facing still in the coming future. And uh, I do hope that this kind of online education may be lifted because personally, I don't prefer this kind of online education. I would love to see you all in Taiwan in person. So I, uh, I do hope that situation will change in some way. Okay. And, uh, and the continuation of some of the priority activity that we are going to do in the future, well, we will try to encourage the outbound study to the student, and we will try to recruit more inbound international student. As I just mentioned, that we offer scholarship for the international student so that the international student will be able to come to Taiwan for their postgraduate study. And of course, we are still working very hard with our partner university everywhere in the world. Actually, I plan to visit our European partner university. Uh, uh, actually, it would be uh, next Monday, but because of the pandemic here in Taiwan, the president decided to cancel our visit to, to Europe. But we still have close uh, interaction with our 
uh, international institute around the world. And uh, uh, we, we are hosting a lot of online conference with our partner university. So the international collaboration in the curriculum and so on is still working on. And the faculty exchange and development, we will continue to do that. Uh, lately, the uh, Office of International Affairs, we do organize, we do organize some of the information for our partner university so that our partner university will know the expertise of our uh, faculty member so that the partner university, the, anybody who is interested in certain areas of research, and we will be able to continue that kind of uh, uh, research possibility. So the faculty exchange and so on is still something that we try to do in the coming future. But over here now, we can see due to the pandemic, due to the COVID-19, we can see that the internationalization changed a little bit. Okay. We used to have a lot of internationalization abroad. Okay. Everything that we do has something to do with a foreign country or foreign partner university. But because of the COVID-19 in Taiwan, we changed that slightly to a concept that we see is internationalization at home. Well, when we say at home, and at home, how can you do the internationalization? Actually, we are trying to transform some of the knowledge that we have, okay, we're trying to transform some of the, the information and apply the, the uh, knowledge that we communicate with our partner university or with our uh, international school. And we try to do that. We try to do that so that we can do something what we understand here as regional revitalization. I don't know whether that is happening in your country or not, but over here in Taiwan, we are working on the regional revitalization. Use the concept that we have with our partner university overseas, and now we try to use that sort of concept here uh, in Taiwan, okay? Uh, well, we try to connect ourselves with the world and there are a lot of things that is happening in the world, okay? For example, <clears throat> for example, I don't know whether you have heard about the, uh, what I understand is the Stanford 2025. The Stanford University proposed a, a major educational reform in their uh, university. And the separated into the four different ways of transforming their education. And that lead to some of the, the changing concept in Taiwan. So in Taiwan, we start to have the higher educational, uh, higher education project by the Ministry of Education. That something to do with the Stanford 2025. They try to have the open loop university that relate to life, lifelong learning, or they pace education is personalized and customized education. Maybe if some of you are interested in uh, a more detail into that, uh, I recommend that you can uh, try to check the keyword Stanford 2025. And I believe that over the internet, there will be a lot of things that you will be able to see. And then is the exit flip, is the competency-based learning. And then the last one is the purpose learning, is the project-based learning. So over here, they are trying to do something to reform the educational concept. So in Taiwan, we do have the similar things that is happening here. We try to use the ed higher education sprout project so that we try to change ourselves. So we start to think more about what we are seeing here is the, what is the future university? And the university should be a borderless university. And how the university can be a co-learning university with other uh, domain or in, let's say, uh, oh, okay, let me share with you the next one. Okay. And this is what 
we are trying to see is that the future university, the future university should have uh, a greater function, uh, much more function uh, beyond what we understand today. Because today, more or less, when we talk about a university, we focus on the spreading of knowledge and maybe uh, the uh, professor's research and so on. But I think it should contain much more than that under the concept that we have. That the borderless university is asking the university should try to open its gate to the outside so that the industry and the university will be able to do a lot of the collaboration. And then the university should open to the society. So then the university will be able to do what we understand here as the university's social responsibility. The university does have a lot to do over here uh, in that. So at National Pindo University, in order to respond to this kind of, of concept change, now that we have the Mountain Dao College, that will be the focus of the response to the change. So that we have the university social responsibility and the regional revitalization and so on, and trying to have the interdisciplinary uh, uh, training for our students so that the student will be able to meet the need of the outside. So we are trying to uh, make lots of changes in response to the need. So over here, I would like to share with you some of the information that we have at National Pingdong University because we hear the, the need, we understand the need of the society. So the university is now working on a lot of the university social responsibility project. As I understand in Thailand, uh, in the northern part of Thailand, I understand that there are many uh, projects, that the King's Project and also the Kring's Project in the Chiang Mai and Chiang Lai area. So that will help the people over there in some way. And pretty much of the content that I understand is quite similar to what we are saying here as the university social responsibility. Because one of the major things that we do is to help the local people and trying to help the, uh, the original revitalization in the area so that no, no matter they are a, uh, a small village in agriculture or other kinds of things, we try to do what we can to associate the university with the society. So the university uh, in the past two years or so, we start to have this kind of USR project. And then the USR project that we have actually is highly are recommended by the Ministry of Education in Taiwan. And we won the silver prize uh, in all of these four uh, USR projects. And our USR project is in the leading position in Taiwan because uh, four USR project is, uh, we have the most USR project in Taiwan. No, any other university have anything more than four. Okay, most some of the university have only one or two or so, and some even have nothing. But my university now is having a, a four U.S. projects, and we also have some of the uh, auxiliary small program that is associated with the four main projects. So over here, that the project that we have is associated with the education goal. So we try to use the co-learning model in the remote area of Pingdong. Uh, just now in the opening, uh, Sonia uh, has shown you the location of, uh, of Pingdong. And Pingdong is in the southern part of Taiwan, is the far south of Taiwan. 
is very, is actually uh, we can say is very far away from Taipei. Even though that we can go to Taipei through the high speed train within one hours and thirty minutes, but uh, it is the most southern part in Taiwan, and we do have a lot of mountain area. And we have the indigenous people living in a mountain area where they have the geographical difficulty in a way that generate inequality in education. So the university is trying to do the co-learning model in the remote area of the Pingdong. And we try to help the elementary school, try to help the uh, secondary school so that they will have the resources from National Pingdong University. And every society have its uh, disadvantaged uh, population. Some of the population that, well, in a way is uh, psychologically uh, disadvantaged. The, because the university have one department is Department of Special Education. So then the Department of Special Education try to integrate different department on campus and also with the local university nearby our university. And we try to integrate the resources so that we start to care about those disadvantaged people, especially psychologically in uh, disadvantaged people. We try to help them in some way so that they will be able to uh, go into the society again because in the past that we understand that many of the disadvantaged people there is always barrier then there is always difficulty for these people to go into the society quite a lot of them they stay at home most of the time but now the university is trying to use its resources to help people at the university, we have uh, we have a special program. We call it the learning assisted dog. OK, learning assisted dog. So what is the learning assisted dog? Because some of the students, young students, they have some kind of psychological uh, a problem uh, in study. So we train the dog. The dog is specially trained and these dogs will become a friend for these kind of student so that the student will feel comfortable when they are staying with the dog and then under that kind of circum under that kind of circumstance the student will be able to uh, uh, resume their learning in that atmosphere and that is something that we do uh, uh, through the Department of Special Education. And then, of course, there are other kinds of problems. Uh, there are other kinds of situations that we face. But today I would like to share with you uh, the 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 uh, the other one is the propelling the multicultural industry and the Pingdong local creation uh, practice things. OK, uh, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, actually, the one that I'm going to share with you is restore the beauties of good resources and recycle and co-creation in society. And this is the one that I'm going to share with you because this is one of the projects that encourage our students to go into the local society with people. And they have very good outcome in that project. So the project, the USR project that we see is the restore the beauties of good and resources and recycle and co-creation in society. Of course, one thing that I can uh, that I that I'm very sure is that uh, Taiwan can you hear? Yes, we can hear you now, sir. Okay. Can you, uh, I, uh, because it's, it's, uh, it's out of battery. Okay, now I can another one. 
All right, so over here, that Taiwan is actually very famous for its uh, recycling uh, uh, issue. And we do have a lot of resources in recycle. Uh, we have a different ways of recycling things uh, in our society, from the city to the suburban area. We all have that kind of thing. But over here, what we are trying to do is, is a project to spread the news, to spread the knowledge or to spread the issue of circular economics to the society and also to the faculty member and the student. And one of the major things is to uh, to help the local people to, to, to have that kind of habit that don't throw things away easily, okay? Don't throw things away easily. Okay, and uh, they, we, we help them to do the recycle. We help them to recycle and we mobilize the repairing skill of the student. For example, uh, we try to help the student uh, to have the knowledge in repairing the bicycle. Okay, repairing the bicycle. So in the program, we train the student something that is easy, okay, something that is easy, and they learn how to, they learn the structure of the bicycle, and they learn what kind of problem usually happen with the bicycle, and how can they fix the bicycle. So we ask uh, uh, some of the master from outside to help the student to understand, to have the knowledge, and so that the student will be able to go into the society. Uh, to go into the society to help the people. So instead of throwing things away, and then they will be able to do the repairing. And we even uh, uh, organize the information uh, and to publish something for the student so that the student will be able to understand it for example, to understand the functions of the bicycle to electric fan and all other kinds of things. We're trying to do this kinds of thing. And the participating student and the local people, the number is now increasing and increasing. So we do hope that this kind of USR project will be able to help our students to engage themselves into the society and they will, uh, have a better understanding of the society and probably in the future, when they graduate from the university, they will be able to carry this kind of uh, revitalization issue in the society. So you can see even though is a female, well, uh, I'm not having a, a gender preference, okay? Uh, no discrimination, all right? But even a female student here, she can still learn to fix the electric fan, okay? In my, in my house, most of this kind of work will be the man's job, okay? Okay, it will be the man's job, but over here that we are trying to help our student. We're trying to help our student to do this kind of work so that they will be able to uh, walk into the society and help. And there are many other things that they learn in a society and doing the, the fixing work, okay? Doing the fixing work, okay? And the par participate in the self-reading project of the student in the, uh, in the Department of Social Development. Okay, so now they try to publish uh, something. Uh, so they try to publish something uh, for the local community to tell the local people to uh, the resident in the society and how they can uh, re recycle their things. And we do try to have this kind of uh, activity for the local people and also for our students. And this is the thing that we do in the past. And uh, in the future that we try to focus on conducting the bicycle and electrical appliance repair workshop for the student and for the local people in the concept of circular economy and will be responsible for 
uh, responsible consumption to the teacher and student in the school. And you can see that these, these are the things that we continue to work on uh, for the future. Okay. And we are going to start planning to use the micro courses and micro credit to invent it, uh, to invite uh, uh, another university, nearby university as a joint project. Uh, well, over here, probably I can share with you the micro courses or micro credit is one of the project in the higher education pro program uh, or higher education pro project. The concept of that is usually when we talk about the courses in a university, it that they contain two credit hour or three credit hour in a semester. And then it would take a very long time or some comprehensive or very complete understanding in certain subjects. But over here, in order to accommodate some of the things that we are doing in the social revitalization, we try to use the micro courses concept. And which means that the courses may be only, let's say, 0.5 credit hours. Okay, 0.5 credit hour. And 0.5 credit hour probably mean that eight hours of study only in one semester, or not really in one semester, but in a month or two, that's fine, but only eight hours. Or the micro credit is to one hours only. So that the student, they can study something for one hour here, one hour here, one hour, and then the student will be able to add up all the micro credit that they learn into one full credit hours. So that the student can also have the credit hour to fulfill their graduation. So this is the concept that we are now doing at National Pingdong University that we will be able to help the student to learn things that is much more than the previous design in our cur curriculum. And the university now ask all the department to provide 20 full credit hour, uh, 20 free credit hour so that they can study in different kinds of department that will also accommodate the micro courses that I just mentioned, the micro credit that I that I just mentioned. So these are the things that we are we are now doing to help the student. So, <clears throat> and we will try to form the Southern Repair Alliance to help society in the South from Thai, uh, Tainan, Kaohsiung, and Pindong area. So these are the things that we are now doing, okay? So actually, uh, various kinds of things is now undergoing, and uh, I do hope that the USR project that we do will be able to meet the SD, SDG educational goal. So the educational goal is, the edu is to ensure inclusive equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunity for all. So from what I just mentioned in the one of the US project that we see is that we try to promote, uh, try to promote the effective learning environment for our students. And we try to uh, uh, put our students engagement in the local community as a field experimentation and we will provide the learning field in a lifelong perspective so that the student will be able to uh, uh, have something that they learn from the university and meet the requirement. So the post pandemic, we are now facing a shift from the internationalization abroad to the internationalization at home. And we are trying to set the new norm at National Pingdong University. So in order to meet that, uh, the university is uh, setting up the uh, EMI Development Center. The EMI stands for 
the English as a medium of instruction. Uh, we are trying to push all our uh, faculty member and try to lecture all the courses in English and so that we will be able to accommodate more international students uh, to National Pingdong University. Uh, as I just mentioned, that all the students who are interested in coming to National Pingdong Univers University to study for his or her postgraduate degree, they are more than welcome to join us. And we are trying to, uh, we will try our best uh, to educate the young international student, all right? And hopefully that we will open the possibility and channel to work with our international student now online, in the future on site uh, to help help the uh, in, international student or whoever are interested in coming, okay? So in the end, uh, I, uh, I would like to hope that uh, in the end, I would like to see that. Oop. There will be a success in the higher education, even after the pandemic from 2019 to the current situation. And I do hope that there, the, uh, the pandemic will be gone in a way and that uh, we will resume the regular internationalization that we understand and we will be able to uh, be with all the international students face to face and also with the exchange faculty and the exchange staff. Okay, so that will be the end of my presentation and I, I would like to see whether uh, you do have any questions or comments. Thank you all. Uh, I think that we still have 15 minutes for questions and comments that I would like to have some interaction with you. And that, uh, if you have any question that I will be delighted to answer your question. Okay, uh, Gusty, please. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, it's Gusty, Professor. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Thank you. please. Uh, uh, I would like to know your uh, perspective about the education for the next future. I mean, since we have this pandemic, we uh, most of us are get used to have online uh, teaching okay. and learning, right? Uh, so what do you think the prospect of having uh, online online study i mean like online course which having collaboration among universities because with with this technology it allows us to have like open <clears throat> online course that all students from around the world can access so do you think it's a good uh, prospect or opportunity for a university to open that kind of courses that yeah online sure. and Sure, sure. I think uh, the online courses uh, with international uh, uh, partner university, I think it is now uh, underway in many universities, including National Pingdong University. We do have a lot of online uh, conference or online mm -hmm. workshop with our partner university. And of course, online courses is also possible. Actually, the uh, Three days ago, I had a, a video conference with uh, the Prince of Songkla University uh, in Thailand, and uh, uh, we are proposing uh, a joint project in in one of the programs uh, about the data science. So that will be a completely uh, online uh, courses for the students. Uh, mm -hmm. from everywhere. So actually, I think this kind of idea is something that is good and cheap in some way. But of course, the quality assurance is one thing that I mm -hmm. care the most. While we are doing this kind of online, uh, uh, online courses or online meeting, uh, 
to be honest, uh, the online uh, teaching, from my point of view, or from my personal experience, my online teaching uh, is not very successful. Okay, well, I, I have to say that my online teaching is not very successful because as we can see that students will not be, will not stay before the camera all the time and you don't know their response. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't know their response. So over here that I can see you and I can know your response. I can know whether you are listening or not, mm -hmm. but many times when we many time when we face the student, they don't they don't show themselves before the camera. So we will not be able to know whether they are listening whether they are, uh, are paying attention, okay? So it would be difficult in some way. So, so well, of, of course, because of the pandemic uh, or let's say because of the economical issue that we mentioned, the financial problem and so on, online uh, education seems to be something that is cheaper, that is effective in some way, but it also has its limitation and especially in the quality assurance issue. So I, I, of course we, this perspective is good, but as I said, how can we be very sure in the quality assurance is something that I do concern very much. It's feasible and is ongoing, but we have to think more about how to do the monitoring. Of, 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 of course, I can say, whoever wants to take the online courses, you must show yourself all the time before the camera. If you couldn't meet that requirement, then you don't take this course. You can do that, all right? Or we will try to uh, uh, give them uh, a lower grade if they couldn't show up or something like that. So that to sort of enforce them to, to present themselves before the camera. So that will be something that we can try to do. There will always be some kind of problem going on and we will be able to find some way to fix that kind of problem. But I think that it's possible. And yes. we are delighted to have this kind of joint program with you. If you have any idea, sure, get in touch sure, with us. Sure, yeah. Professor, yeah. Okay, yeah. anyone yes. else? Thank you else? for the insights, Professor. There is a, a statement, or maybe a question from the chat room that says that there are a worldwide problems for difficulties yes. keeping the students' attention during online. Uh -huh. Okay. What do you have anything to say about that? As I, as I mentioned, as I mentioned, unless there we can try to, uh, we can try to just, just say, my requirement for the online courses, I will like to see everybody. I would like to see you all before the camera. I would try to do the clicking because otherwise, you know, there, there's no control of that. To be honest with you all, we have we have joined many international conference, but quite a lot of time after we hook on to the meeting and then we shut our camera, we shut our microphone, and we do something else. I think it is quite common in the international uh, conference and so on. So I believe same thing happened to our student as well, because that happened to us and that will happen to our student as well. Okay, uh, I would like to invite uh, uh, Apriya, Ap Aprila. Oh, okay, thank Apri you, Professor. Yes, yes, you can call me Mita. Next time I will change the, the yeah. ID. Okay, so it will be easier. Um, Aprilia? Yes, yes, Professor. Oh, Aprilia, Mita. okay. 
Ya, oke. Okay. Uh, thank you, Professor. Um, the problem with the online, uh, the online course or uh, online lecturer is that we have to have a real good uh, data connection or internet connection. Well, in Taiwan, maybe it's not a quite huge problem, even though for sometimes yes, the Wi-Fi is not is, is a problem, but most likely the the connection is pretty good. But for example, like in Indonesia, I'm also a lecturer in a medical uh, faculty. Uh, most of the student has not really good uh, internet connection, so they have to shut down <coughs> their camera. And then I try to like a building engagement with them during the lecture, such as uh, where if they are, they are not asking question, then I am the one who asks the question. But they feel like they've been interrogated. So like, um, so do you have any idea? Uh, is there anything I can do to increase the engagement of when I do the lecture? Because okay. like turning on the camera sometimes is not an option because of the bad connection. Uh, uh, okay. That's all I can ask. Thank you, Professor. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, probably I would like to hear uh, Professor no, pardon, uh, to hear uh, your question first and before I get into that one. Uh, I think it's not a real question, but, but uh, I want just want to share something about yeah. uh, the online teaching, uh, the pandemic uh, situation. And I think it's not, it's not only one side of the coin. They still have the other side of the coin that the, the, pandemic situation uh, change something about the, the online uh, tools. For example, like a Zoom meeting or something more, or even Google Meet, right? Uh, last many years ago, the, the online meeting is not acceptable, but now yeah. we, we, can, we can accept it and use it like a daily life. And in the same time, for other problem, for example, like a uh, professor mentioned about the mo mobility of the student, this help us a lot to save the money. If I want to send the student to Taiwan, I have to pay a lot. But professor from IMUTL, Pisanulo, said that can we organize some event that the student can share to practice English or something, even though the 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 internet quality is not good, but However, they, they can use the language with foreign uh, friends or something like that. And uh, for, for the e-learning, I think we have to clearly find about the attribute of the e-learning. If we, our per perspective still, still use a classroom lecture in e-learning is not good, right? You just one way communication, but how we use the attribute of the e-learning as it, this is the, 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 the thing that we have to, to, to talk about because we cannot change the classroom into the internet. Mm. The students study five, six hours a day to see the camera, to see the, the screen. It's not, it's not the same as the classroom. And uh, last but not least, I think uh, for assessment also, I think in, in the slide of the professor uh, Stanford 2025, right? Uh, this is about how to aware the student to self pace uh, of the study more than, more than the period of time of the study in the class. This is uh, the important thing to to let our students uh, have their own pace. Uh, this is my idea. Okay. To, to yeah. Share Thank you. Uh, and also uh, now uh, we have the Han Tran Ta from from Vietnam. 
if I couldn't pronounce yeah, your name sir? properly, yeah, so please uh, beg my pardon. <laughs> okay, yeah, now, thank, you. Uh, thank you for assi assigning me to the uh, small presentations first. It's a pleasure to be here with all the people, friends, faculty all over the Asia, and especially in um, Southern Asia. So, first one, uh, uh, I think it is a. Uh, we need to uh, flex to be flexible for the COVID nineteen pandemic, but uh, especially in education, even though we do everything right now uh, over the online uh, protocol, right? So I think then it's the. It depends on uh, we we define the situations. So the process is uh, personally, I think the, the process and isn't uh, it's not important right now, um, rather than the, um, the evaluation, the outcome, right? So because of the mm -hmm. teachers, even their students cannot do um, uh, <clears throat> face to face activities. So that's the reason why. It, we do it online to protect our health. But what about the vaccinations? Do you completely uh, believe it in the vaccination hmm? for just just for just a, a long run? I think the vaccination is a good way to stop the situation right now uh, okay. within the yep. COVID pandemic. So okay. Online is an I think online is a good uh, tools for for us <clears> right now, but uh, I um, uh, strongly uh, assign the the weight uh, for all of us uh, to uh, consider. So we we need to think about the the new method to evaluate people, what people do, yeah, what people have done. The reason why I, I want to say what's on the bottom of okay. the state. Yeah, evaluation. okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, I think uh, due to due to the time limitation, I won't uh, uh, say too much uh, from here. Uh, I think first of all, I would like to answer uh, the question uh, raised by Eva uh, is about the uh, the accessibility of the internet, because we as I as as I understand. The geographical issue is also an inequality in higher education. Uh, no matter what, where you are, we always have that sort of problem because the infrastructure of the country vary a lot. I have one figure that in the U.S., uh, the most uh, the uh, this uh well let me see uh one of the most uh one one state that have the best uh internet penetration has 88 percent but the worst is 74 percent in the u.s even in the country like usa you have a difference more than nearly 15 percent difference in the internet penetration not to mention i can say that in in the asian country and in some of the area the internet penetration may not be that good and also the financial situation of each family is different as i said if you have three kids at home and the three kids will go to school and all three kids need to have the online learning online teaching basically that means that you might you must have three remote device that will be able to enable your kid to participate in the online teaching so to many of the family that would be difficult even here in taiwan i heard a lot of complaint from the parent because sometimes they have one notebook at home, two notebook at home at most. Most of the family may not have three notebook or three computer at home. 
So if one of the student will occupy the notebook or the computer, the other one might have to use a mobile phone and so on. And that has very big limitation on the interaction with the professor or with the teacher. So that would be something that is big. So over here, it is difficult for me to say how I can help the student to uh, improve their attention uh, on this online teaching or online learning. It is, it is difficult because there is always a, a hardware limitation in some way. But I think, as I said, that if we try to increase the student's attention to the class, we Personally, I think we must try to design something that is more effective and contain the student's response during the lecture. We must take that into consideration. So then we will help the student to pay more attention on our lecture. And then that would improve the efficiency of the online teaching. So I think this would be something that all of us, we have to see. And just now uh, from some of the sharing by others that we understand, the, the change in, in our mentality from on-site teaching to online teaching is necessary because of the pandemic. Because if you st if you if you always favor the on-site teaching instead of online teaching, and you have that kind of resistance to that, in a way, you never change your mentality. Then you always don't like the the change in teaching. Then I believe that quality teaching on the uh, online learning will always be a problem. So, so uh, not only the student have to change, but I think also the teacher have to change as well. Okay, uh, it's now five past 12 here in Taiwan, uh, even though it's probably still a bit early uh, in uh, many other uh, partner university. I would like to open one final question. If anyone would like to ask question, one final question. All right. Uh, Isra? Yes, please. good morning, Professor. My name is Isra yes, from yes. Shanghai, Thailand. As we uh -huh. discussed about the teaching online, we, we, we may focus on our side as our, we are lecturer or educator. How about your, your perspective or opinion about the learner or the student from their side, how their, how is their behavior or their okay. characteristic, they might okay. change or not, or how they're familiar with the online education or on-site. Because uh, in the future, the generation gap between our as a lecturer and also the student be, will be much more, right? So some mm -hmm. some some student, I think they must familiar with the technology and online. So how, okay. how do you think about the, the teaching? Right. Okay, you. so, so uh, I think uh, in response to your question is that personally from my classes, from my classes, most of my students, they want me to go to the classroom to have the face-to-face -face interaction with the student. I don't know whether it's because that uh, my, uh, my presentation in the class is more interesting to them or not, but almost all my students, they prefer to have the on-site uh, learning uh, instead of online. Because the other day when I had a uh, online uh, teaching and uh, the student complained and no any response from the student at all. So, how I can change the students' mentality and so that they will accept the online uh, uh, learning, I don't know. As I mentioned earlier, in Taiwan, basically, most of the uh, 
activity in the university remain the same as usual. No closure of the university. Okay, so actually in Taiwan, we don't have that kind of serious problem with the online teaching. I do know that in some of the Asian country, the situation was quite serious and the closure of the university is common in some way. But in a way, uh, if we are, I, I, I I probably I can say that in the coming in the coming future in Taiwan, we I believe that the situation would get worse because the government is now taking a different approach to COVID nineteen. So then, there will be a lot of infections everywhere, and also on campus. So then we will tr face the COVID nineteen. Uh, truly, and the online teaching will be a real norm at camp on campus. So then, probably, I have to do some uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, psychological uh, encouragement to the student. Now, uh, I don't know how long it's going to take, but I think how to educate our student to understand the needs of the online learning, uh, I think is something that we have to take a serious here in Taiwan, because at the moment, I can say that I don't have that kind of experience. And I, I haven't think about how I can en encourage my student to learn in a different fashion and so that they can learn, they can do the same. Okay, I, I actually, I could not provide a solid uh, answer to your question, but I can see from other uh, other experience in other country and how we can try to do something uh, before the pandemic really hit Taiwan. At the moment, we 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 don't have that problem, but I believe that soon in the future we will have that. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I think. Uh, due to the uh, time issue and uh, I would like to end my uh, presentation here and I hope that is my presentation is okay to you and I hope that if there is anything that you would like to uh, have contact with me and uh, get in touch with Sonia and I believe that uh, Sonia will be able to provide the information to you and I will be delighted to have conversation with everyone. Okay, thank you for your attention again. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, okay, Sonia, we, your time. Yes, yes, yes. Thank I would you. like to have uh, an, a minute um, before we say goodbye for the morning sessions. I have reposted the a Google Form link in the chat room, also in our line group. Sign in and sign out is essential. It is important because this has a, this has anything to do with your uh, certificate. Okay, at the end of this program, and for this morning, everyone who has signed in, no matter what time, before the session begin or during the session begin, everyone mm -hmm. has three hours for this morning, okay? Because this is the first time that we conduct we conduct a program online and 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 yeah, it's because it's the first session. It is special. So everyone gets 3 hours, okay? And of um and we will have a survey. It's it's it will be in a Google form that uh we will that I will post in in the um in line for every topic okay after every topic in the program we will have a, a, a simple survey for all of you to to fill in your your opinion or your um answers or you know for your or your evaluation for all the topic that we offer is valuable okay um so we know what what to improve, what to do to make our program better for the next time.
So please do spend some time to complete the survey. And for the certificate, I know it's a bit early to tell you now, but I think it's important that you know that the certificate we this this uh, for this program will be in PDF. Normally, our participants get to receive a hard copy, but because you you are all too far away from us, so we will send you a, a PDF. Okay, 